Uh, my name is Haiping, and uh, I, I'm so here besides the data scientists, we have uh, four engineers, and uh, um, my co colleagues told me don't don't tell other people we are fraud engineers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because we are trying to catch those like uh, frauders, suspicious customers and drivers. Yeah. So um, today uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, have an introduction on the uh, on the key lab we are using, and have some examples how to use the key lab CI/CD. Yeah. So. Uh, I joined uh, Goja not long ago, and uh, uh, when I joined Goja, I was surprised to see what Goja is using in GitLab. And uh, because my previous experience was like uh, use uh, GitHub and use Bigbucket, and uh, uh, I was wondering why here we are using GitLab. Then I realized uh, GitLab has a very uh, good feature of the like, CI/CD. And uh, it's already uh, integrated uh, because if you use you use uh, uh, key hub or um, B bucket, usually you have to integrate with uh, Jenkins or uh, Circle IO or Drone IO, a lot of other stuff to run the, your uh, test unit test integration test or the how to deploy to Kubernetes, all those jobs you have to uh, set up on Jenkins. Uh, it's, it's pretty hard. And maintain Jenkins itself, it's a job. <laughs> but it could be because you have a huge team, uh, how to scale the Jenkins is uh, another problem. So uh, here we use uh, GitLab. And uh, a nice feature, OK, uh, GitLab has some problem. <laughs> Oh, I mean, GitLab.com has some problem. That's why I'm using our, hopefully I'm not fired. <laughs> I'm using our <laughs> office. Because I was trying to um, push my code to the uh, GitLab.com and uh, uh, have, I, I don't know what was the problem. Actually, the first time I heard GitLab was. Uh, when it went down. Yeah, when it went down. <laughs> <laughs> when it was in the news for the bad reason, and uh, it said it lost like six hours of data. Uh, in their uh, post-modem, they say they lost like uh, 5,000 users, 5,000, uh, about 5,000 projects, wow. and uh, seven, uh, 700 users around there. Yeah. That's but, what happens when you write a <laughs> uh, So uh, uh, I'm, I'm using the company one. But um, when GitLab.com is OK, I will push the, I will migrate the code to the GitLab.com. Yeah, so uh, the nice thing of the GitLab uh, repo is uh, it, it have building pipelines. So usually how uh, within the pipeline, you can uh, have multiple stages. So uh, pipeline is important. If you don't have, you don't use uh, GitLab, you have to build your own pipeline. And uh, uh, so here I can show you. Where, right now I have two stages. So so once I uh, checking my code to my branch, the the jobs the pipeline will start to run, and uh, you can define your own stage. And here I have build, and I have uh, tests. So tests I have uh, integration tests, have unit tests, and uh, build basically just make sure it compiles. You can run Go build. Here later I will show you how to run the unit tests and uh, integration tests. And uh, you can add more. Let's say you can want to show the test coverage. So in Gojek, uh, one of the repo we use is we show the test coverage if your merge request is drop the test coverage, it just fill your fill your jobs and you have to fix it. Yeah. Otherwise uh, we want to make sure we maintain certain test coverage. Yeah. So you can also run uh, go linter. So make sure uh, is you are using the best practices. 
and uh, you may also run the go go report to show what was the percent, how well it, are you getting A or B or whatever. <laughs> yeah. So I haven't done that. Uh, so this is the CI. Uh, I haven't integrated the CD yet. So basically, you can easily build another stage and and build your Docker image, deploy to push your Docker image to your Docker registry, and you can from there you can deploy to AWS or deploy to uh, Google Cloud. Yeah, so uh, this is the introduction on the uh, GitLab. So I will give you uh, a very small small uh, examples. So uh, right now is everything is uh, is uh, microservice. So uh, some basic like, the features of microservices we so it calls another microservice and it talk to some DB. So this is the basic basic stuff, right? So microservice you talk to other uh, service you, you retrieve the data from your DB. So how we how we run the unit test and the integration test on the CI. So I will give you some. Uh, I gave the example will show you how to run it. So, uh, so we can just give some thought. Thought. So definitely we don't run. So let's say this is my uh, service one. On the CI, definitely I don't want the, this dependency, right? Because you don't want your CI job is like intermittent. Um, sometimes fail, it sometimes pass depends on some other service. So later the code I'll show you in the GoLand how to remove this dependency. This is uh, one of the things I talk about and uh, how to run, uh, integrate this DB. Yeah, so uh, integrate this DB is important because uh, we can mock, we can mock everything, we can even mock the DB. But the mocking doesn't make sure your SQL is running correctly, right? So you, you know in the uh, the way you write, the way you run SQL query on MySQL or Postgres or some other stuff is different. They also they all have their dialects. So I will show you the code quickly. <coughs> Okay, so this is a simple code. So, uh, this is the main. Okay, so uh, I, I, I borrowed this uh, example from one of the blog I saw. It's on the uh, blog, go for academic something. Yeah, so uh, they have a very simple API. So this API you call uh, uh, this temperature API give a city name, Singapore. It return you the temperature. So this is calling external service. And uh, I'm thinking how we integrate DB. So I'll give, uh, so let's say you give the full name of Singapore, it will return you the temperature of the Singapore. If you give a short name, SRN, so I will retrieve the DB. So DB is very simple DB. You give us short name, it return you uh, full name Singapore. Then we pass this Singapore to the external service. So uh, by the way, I'm using the VS code. <laughs> Nice. It's okay. I don't know. Increase the form. Oh, increase the form. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, so first thing I talk about. Uh, so it's very basic stuff. I want to I want to cut this dependency because on the CI job I don't want to hit uh, external service. So uh, here I define. The, this is my dependency. This uh, environment have all the dependencies. So 
I define an interface called weather because it called the external service weather. So because we use the interface, it's easier to play to the dependency injection. So in the test, how we do it is we do a mock. And in the test, in the test, instead of calling the real service, I call the mock. And uh, because it, this, this mock implements satisfy this interface. So in this main uh, integration test, it will, it will not call the external service. And uh, you will use, when you build, when you uh, instantiate this mock, you pass the, uh, all the parameters. Here you can do all the magic and return it back. It's just like, so you, if you have complicated uh, cases, you can, here the logic will be more complicated. Because here is just an example, it's just, you return whatever you will just return. Passing whatever thing you will return. But also here the part you can use some library. You give, a, uh, in, you give an interface, you give you, you will generate a mocked uh, struct, then you can say on this return that, on this return that. But here is simple enough we can all understand. Yeah, so this is, uh, this is the way we, we uh, decouple ourselves from the external service for the integration test. So how we uh, run the integration test with the DB uh, we use the help from the GitLab. GitLab has a, uh, so this is basically, this is the, um, the way you build the pipeline. You just write one file, YAML file, GitLab dash ci dot YAML. So here you can, can you see? Yeah. Oops. Yeah, here we use the service. You can use the Postgres service. So here you will have a database running on the on the GitLab. When it, when when the GitLab runner is running, you, it, it will create a DB for you, and uh, you can do your integration from the endpoint hitting here and hitting your DB mm -hmm. and coming back. You also, of course, hit another mock uh, external service here. So you can see the integration test, how we write is we use the standard, we hitting from the very uh, endpoint, we mock, we use the uh, HTTP uh, test. This this is a very standard way to write with, if you want to hit the endpoint directly. So that's why it's considered integration test. And uh, yeah, I think uh, that's about it. And as I mentioned, uh, if you want to have another stage, you have right now you have build, you have test, you want to deploy, you can easily. Uh, instead of using GoLand, you can, this image, you can use your GoLand with Docker command. So in another stage, here we have stage build test, you can write a deploy. And uh, in, the deploy in the deploy stage, you can run Docker build, Docker push to registry. Then from there, you can deploy to whatever you want. Yeah, I think that's all. Can you run your own <coughs> custom service for integration tests? Custom service? What do you mean? You want to you want a real thing? Yeah, you want you want to have some some data in some D B which is not supported by GitLab. Cassandra for example. Oh you are saying 
uh, this service, is it? Yeah. Or let's say, okay, so I think uh, right now GitLab support uh, service is like Redis, uh, Postgres, MySQL. If you want like Cassandra or MongoDB, you can build your own, because it's simply just a so Docker file. You can run your Cassandra latest or whatever Mango yeah. latest. Oh, okay. Yeah, it, it's 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 quite nice. Okay. Instead of you, yeah. Uh, if I to use a custom uh, version, for example, uh, one minute. Yeah, you can do that. You you mean this image? Yeah, yeah, you can do that. So this base image is how you run your all your go build, go test. Is on this image. So it's actually a Docker image. Yeah, it's a Docker ah. image. Yeah, you, you can run your own version. How you are relating the mock response? You know, uh, for the, the mocking the service, how you are relating that to those uh, So this is. Uh, Something to interface, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah ma'am. Uh, so I have this. Uh, this it contains all my dependency, and uh, I make this one to satisfy the uh, HTTP, uh, satisfy the HTTP dot handler interface. Okay. Yes, uh, I don't know. Yeah, so you see this one, it have one function. So this will satisfy the handler interface, right? Because of this function. Yeah, so this is my main, this is my main, but in my main test, you have a mock weather. Yeah. You see, uh, where is it? Yeah. <laughs> ah, this one. You created the mock. Yeah, see? Use the same, because this is the interface, I pass a mock. So the same thing will satisfy will satisfy the handler interface. That's why that's how we remove this dependency. But how you will uh, load in integration test? This integration test, like uh, you are going to uh, test whole component, right? Yeah. How you are going to inject the mock? It is like uh, Go has like a build tags. It's like uh, are you loading particular uh, different class for the testing for third party or something with build tags? Uh, okay, I, I'm not sure whether I get your question, but why I call it integration test is because I hit from the endpoint, yeah. very endpoint. Handler test. Right? Yeah, that's why I call it integration test. Then within this, you have many components, but integration test by my definition is not including the the other services. Where is your code to load the database? To initialize the database, uh, the short Singapore for full Singapore. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, here, uh, did I answer your question? But probably I. <laughs> I wanted to know like how in the integration test, <coughs> how you are going to inject the mocks, for example, in real test you can play the mocks, right? In the integration test. Uh, yeah. This is how I injured the. Do you mean end to end? This is how I yeah, injured the end-to-end -end test. So end -to -end end -to -end -end test. System testing. I mean, how do you do system testing? End-to-end. Yeah. -end. Yeah, so for example, if you have three microservices. Oh, okay. okay. Only test one while mock two. Mm -hmm. Other two, right? Oh, you are saying so you do want together all the service up together, then mm -hmm. you are testing this, hitting this, I hitting that. this way, or you could uh, tag particular classes with three tags. Mm -hmm. For testing purpose, you will load only that mock classes, mm -hmm. and uh, it will be called. So it is non invasive testing. Like. Yeah, so uh, this one, we doesn't have all the. I mean, it only have the mock. If you want to test multiple up running, probably we can. It will be another uh, test cases running w once it's. Deploy to production. It's like more like another service like hitting, hitting and make sure it's written something. So tomorrow, if the contract of that service changes, will it fail? If the contract of the so for example tomorrow in the just one it was returning something, hmm. it changed. Yeah, yeah then your then your oh, uh, 
my test won't fail. But I know what you mean. Let's say this uh, change the contract, right? They like they add a one required field, and then because you are not. But uh, probably my integration test doesn't concern this. Probably you have another end-to-end -end test to have all this make sure. I, I think there are some uh, contract-driven tests. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I knew there are some contract-driven tests. You can run a CI, make sure the contract from another one is, is satisfied. Yeah, we can explore that. But uh, there's also some, something like if you deploy to production, you can run your end-to-end -end test, make sure it's written. Yeah. It's mocked. That's, uh, it, it doesn't, if this contract change, it, will, it won't tell you. <laughs> yeah. 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 How do you load the code and initialize the database? Uh, so, in GitLab. Uh, in Git, how do I initialize How do you initialize uh, Is there some sort of like scaffolding? Uh, basically, I define this. Yes, yeah, so instantiate the Postgres. For yeah. Then here you define all the host DB and the user and password. Yeah. And uh, this is the way I use in my code. Okay. So in my code, you don't see this, but you see DB host, DB name, DB user, DB yeah. Yeah, password. So you have an init function that actually seeds your database? You uh, have an init function that seeds your database? Oh, yeah, I use uh, Goose. I don't know. Where uh, yeah, so, I have this. Uh, so, because it uh, involved the DB, yeah, I have a uh, goose migration. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so you, you populate oh, you your DB. Okay. Yeah. Insert into city. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, uh, I told you just, just uh, short, uh, short name and long name. Yeah, got it. Yeah, got it. good. Uh, there are some other tools. I use Goose. Goose quite quite nice. And so there's uh, some some that also um, send a migrate. That's tool called migrate. Yeah. 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 So yeah, I, I'm sorry, I forgot to show so this. When this call? When this call? So this uh, in the CI. In the script. Yeah. Ah. Yeah. Got it. Yeah, but um, there's way to improve it because uh, you can. This this way means uh, it's just a simple way. It's better way is you can run Goose in your integration test. You can uh, every test you can up first. After every test you down, so you make sure the DB is restored uh, to the original state before every test is wrong. But this is a simple way, just I want to make a point yeah. to use the DB, but uh, definitely we can improve on this. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah, thanks a lot. Okay, thank you.